Hello, welcome back to another tutorial on C++. This one's going to go a little bit of a different direction, but as things start to get more complicated and maybe you're working on your own stuff, um, there's something that new coders really should be doing or should at least know about. So this tutorial is not going to be necessarily so much about the code as more about handling your projects. No matter how small or how whatever you think they are, you should be saving your projects and as you edit and update them you should be saving old versions. And the way people used to do this the old way is they would just make multiple folders and lots of copied files, but you don't need to do that anymore. And the reason is there's this code, there's this website called GitHub, so it's version control. There's other versions of this, there's also Bitbucket and there's I don't know, I think it's one called Subversion, there's a few others, but GitHub seems to be the, the biggest, most recognized one. And if you ever want to get a job in code, you're going to need to know this. If you ever are doing your own projects and want to invite friends to help you or, or whatever it may be, you're going to need to know this. This is really, there. okay, you just have to know this. There's, there's no getting around it. And for some people that's really intimidating, but it's way easier than C++. So if if you're going to learn C++, you might as well get this along the way and this will actually help a lot because you can go look at other people's public code and, and learn a lot here too. And now, when I first started learning GitHub, I was at university and no, it seemed like nobody else was interested in GitHub. I, I seemed to be the only one of my classmates that was like on it. Everybody else was just like confused and unwilling to learn about it. And that kind of baffled me because when I did my research about uh, how people handle their versions of code, this was the answer. And, uh, you know, being in a school with a bunch of coders, I expected that people would be interested in that sort of thing, but nobody was. And I think the reason was people were already so busy with their classes, they were really intimidated by it. They didn't want to do stupid stuff and make embarrassing mistakes and reveal them to the world when they were learning. And you don't have to worry about that because you can make all of your repositories of code private. You, there's no reason to ever make them public if you don't want to. So you can mess up as much as you want and nobody's going to know but you. And that's that should get rid of that whole stress. I, so beyond that, I, I'm not really sure why people were very unwilling to learn it, but if you don't, you're hindering yourself significantly. So, so that's why I'm putting it in here in the C++ series, because I think it's that important. I was considering talking about arrays and data types, but you know what? I think GitHub is more important than that at this point, and uh, not everybody's going to agree with that, but I think it is. So Sigwin, um, you can install Git on Sigwin, and I've already done it. But you run the Sigwin installer and, and do it. There's versions of of, uh, of GitHub all, all over the place. But what we're going to do in this tutorial is basically take this code we've been working on and put it all up on GitHub. And I have a little code tech and tutorials um, repo, you know, along with a bunch of other random ones. So when you log into GitHub or go make an account on GitHub, you'll get a not that you'll get a create a repository button and you and you just go click that, create a new one, and you give it a name. And I'm gonna call this uh, tutorial calculator. And you give it a description if you want, that says optional, public, private. I'm gonna leave it public. But if you don't want other people seeing your code and it's just backup for your own purposes, you can make it private. You can have as many private ones as you want. The only stipulation that GitHub has on that is if I think it's three or more people are working on the code, you need to have a paid account for, for private repos. So basically if you're a business, because um, if, even if it's you and two other friends, you're fine. But you go to three or four other friends, then you might have to start paying because you're basically a business at that point. However, that doesn't mean you can, I mean, there's still ways of sharing it and forking, but that's a little more advanced. So one one of the things that you'll notice about GitHub is it wants a .git ignore and a license 
license is sort of optional when you're starting out um, if your code's not I would do it anyway but you also need a readme so readme get ignore so we're gonna go ahead and make those and I'm just gonna do touch um, I'll do all lowercase readme dot MD for markdown these are markdown files and I also want to touch a dot git ignore and I want to explain a little bit about what a git ignore is a git ignore is just a plain text file it has a dot in front of it because it's a hidden file and it basically tells github which files to ignore because we don't want to upload this actual executable we only want to upload the code because if someone else downloads this executable they're probably on a different operating system and it's not going to run they need to compile it anyways and this is way larger than all of our code files so you want to basically put stuff that you don't want to be up on Git, github that's in your folders in this git ignore so we're going to go ahead and do that and in fact I'm going to show you a little little trick thing Let's see I this public initialize so this is just going to be fully blank I'm not adding any of this stuff and it tells you a little bit of information the very first time you do it about um, how to add the files so I'm gonna go over all this you can you can follow one of these you're not necessarily gonna need all these but basically we're gonna do a push to push our code up there and um, that's that's really gonna be the big thing and there's also well I'll walk you through it let's just let's go ahead and add some stuff to our git ignore that we know we don't want to put up on github so I'm going to open Visual Studio Code this is way at the bottom right let's get it up here I'm gonna make it a little bit larger so I'm gonna type code dot dot slash to go back a directory and then new code and now what this command does is it opens Visual Studio Code on this folder so this is everything in the folder. And you get rid of this welcome. And you'll notice Visual Studio Code does have a source control tab. And I think I turned mine off because I like using the command line. But you can do all this GitHub stuff right within your editor and you don't need to do all the command line stuff. And there's also other programs that will help you along with it. So you don't necessarily need to know all these commands you can just get a program that handles it or use Visual Studio Codes. Even Visual Studio uh, Community Edition has it too. So it's it's not going to be too bad. I, I learned on the command line with Git, so I'm just used to it that way. But uh, I definitely have appreciation for it being built into editors too. Let me see. I forget where I turned it off. I think it was somewhere in Properties or under Extensions. I turned it off. But yours will probably be on because it defaults to on and it'll once you have initialized your directory as a github directory as a git directory it'll start showing up on your little project here so I've got my git ignore I'm going to open that by clicking it and I'm just going to add star.exe and the star is a anything and .exe is well .exe so that's going to ignore this file so that one's in there and the other things we're going to want is we're going to want star.o files. Those are going to be our object files. Now there's a bunch more, and you can go on Google and type um, "git ignore for C++" and find pretty much every every line you'd ever want for C++ to add to yours if you think you're going to be on your project for a while. But for now, I'm just going to have these two lines on my git ignore because I know for sure that those are in this particular project. Well. The .o actually isn't, but it could be if we do any more work on it. The .exe definitely is. Also, if you're on Linux, rather than it being a .exe, you'll see it as a .out. So I'm going to add that as well, just for the Linux users out there. And also, if you get a crash and your program does a core dump, you'll get a .dump file. So I'm going to add that as well, because we don't want to upload our dump files. So those four are some pretty standard ones there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and now I'm going to look at my readme. Now your readme displays on your project on github so you want, basically want to have a little explanation of what this is. Tutorial series uh, I don't know what to 
put here. I might link my channel or something. Calculator built on tutorial series for the code tech and tutorials YouTube channel. That'll be good enough. Might add a little more info. And that's just a plain line. You can also, I'm not going to talk about markdown syntax other than a few things I'm going to say here, but it's sort of like an HTML-esque markup language. So I'm going to make a header here just called Simple Calculator. So that'll be a big header thing. And Visual Studio, all oh, uh, Visual Studio Code also has this awesome thing for markdowns where you can open a preview to the side. So I'm going to click that, and there it is. That's what it's about. What it's going to look like on on GitHub's when it comes up on GitHub. And that's going to be enough for the README. You just should have something. Otherwise, it's it. Uh, I don't know. It'll look really plain. There's our old make file. Okay, everything else is, is fine here. We've still got all these files here. And I think we're good there. We got our git ignore filled out. We got our readme filled out. We could add a license. Um I don't know what to add for license, honestly, right now, but I'd recommend doing a little research, adding a license file. Do new file license. And you can basically go Google uh code licenses or something like that. There's a, there's a bunch of different ones and there's so much to say about it that I really don't want to get into it here and nor do I know quite enough to really say much without without doing some research but you can search something like this, code license, search, choose a license and uh, there we go. My software isn't a project. There are licenses for that. So I, I'm not really sure which one. So and it tells you what happens if there's no license. I don't really want a license on this, so because it's just whatever. Maybe I'll add one at a later date if it matters, but okay, well enough about that. So let's go ahead and get this up to GitHub. So I've already created the repo I called it tutorial calculator so if I go back here I'll see all my repos I got an old one called lambda from an older video I did about lambdas and now I've got this one and it tells you stuff about it you can go click on it and uh, there we go so we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and follow these steps from the command line so what I'm going to do first thing well this first line tells you to create a readme. We've already got files created, so we're not going to worry about this whole step of creating something. We're just going to do git ignit. Git ignit. 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 <laughs> Can't talk. All right, so we, you can start from your root folder, and you just type that directly. And this will initialize your folder as a, as a git folder. And it puts a .git in there, and it puts some, some basic information, and tells tells things like your editor that it's that's ready for github and you want to add your files now this is where it might get a little unintuitive because basically it it doesn't it doesn't just scan your folder and know about everything automatically some programs may do that but um, if you're just doing it command line you actually have to tell it to add files to the upload stuff so when you do a git add, and then if you do a dot, it just does everything. And now when it does everything, it does check your git ignore, and it doesn't put in any of these. So and so with this dot and meaning everything, it's going to mean everything but the stuff in your git ignore. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and now we've got them all added. So the next thing it says is commit. 
So when you add a file, you want to commit it and put a message with it. So committing is, is basically just saying um, it's ready to go out. So add is like prepare. I don't know. Let's think of it as like sending mail out to the, uh, through the post office. So adding it is like preparing your mail, like you know, sealing up your letter. Committing it is like it's like uh, I don't know, taking it to the mailbox, I guess. And the remote is where you want to send it to. So remote add origin and then the address. So this is where you send it to. So we are going to do this commit, git commit, and it commits everything that's currently added. And I'm just going to call my commit. This dash m stands for message. I'm going to call it init, and then it gives me a little info about what I just did. Created all these files. Cool. So now I want to add this origin to tell it where to push it to. Because so far I've only typed git init. ignit. I keep saying ignit. Git, git init. Git add. And git commit. Like there's nothing here that tells it where to actually send this. So that's the point of this remote add origin. Is it tells it to send it to my GitHub. This user. This uh, repo. So it has to know that somehow. If you drop something in the mail with no address to send it to, they're going to be just really confused. This is the same way as if I tried to push this up, it would be like, what are you talking about? For example, it says no configure push destination. So, so let me go ahead and, yeah, I'm going to copy this origin and paste it over here. And now a push should work. I'm going to copy that, paste it over here, push it, and it's going to ask for my username and password. Um, that's the default. Uh, hold on, i, I got going to make sure I get this right. Okay, so I'm on there as my real name. This is just one of my little side side repo things. So that's why I got to do it as my real name. I don't have multiple logins. This is still under my main login. It's just a, I forget what they call it. It's just like a organization, I believe. So you can make organizations too, which is what businesses typically do. And then they invite individual users to work on their organization. So that's kind of the point of those. So now I've got to go get my password. So I'm going to do that on my other monitor. And that's what I'm doing right now disregard and I'm going to paste it in here you can't see it but it is in there it's smart enough to hide it and there it is it says writing pushing we got a success no error and now when we refresh this we'll see that there's now all our code here so anytime you make changes you do a new commit and a new push and that's the very basics of it of getting started and then any at any point you can go to github and look at your history so if you click on a file you'll have a history that way if something goes drastically wrong you can always go back to an old version that's the whole point of this and it also gives you the freedom to change your code to play with stuff to test things out with no worries because worst case scenario you got your old versions thank you for watching this tutorial hopefully it helps you get comfortable and used to to github and realize how important it is and we will continue with our normally scheduled c++ tutorials in a day or so take it easy and keep on coding and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it i always forget to say that I'm not a very good self promoter but it does help help me out, helps my videos get recognized, and I appreciate all you guys, and I'll see you later.